Three months late and one team down in the absence of the Springboks, the Southern Hemisphere's annual Test Championship finally gets underway here in Sydney on Saturday, when the Wallabies take on the All Blacks. The Rugby Championship was renamed the Tri-Nations for this season after the withdrawal of the South Africans. Here are five things you need to know about the tournament. This is Sports File. Australia, New Zealand and Argentina are already in town, but world champion South Africa won't be coming. The Springboks haven't played a test since they beat England to win the World Cup in Tokyo last year, and their home base players have played precious little rugby at all this season. Fearing that sending the Springboks into the fire of the test arena while so unprepared might lead to player welfare issues, Rugby South Africa pulled out at the 11th hour. It was a huge blow to the tournament, both in terms of finances and prestige, but in this season, unlike any other, Southern Hemisphere fans will just be glad of the chance to watch some test rugby. There will be fans, and plenty of them. While the Northern Hemisphere season continues in the deathly silence of empty arenas around Europe, fans will be in the stands for all five tests around Sydney and the one up in Brisbane. The numbers might not approach the world record 110,000 who packed into Sydney's Olympic Stadium to watch New Zealand beat Australia in 2000, but up to 40,000 tickets are on sale for Saturday's tournament opener between the same two teams at the same ground. Both Australia and New Zealand have new coaches this season in Dave Rennie and Ian Foster. And while the likes of Bowden Barrett, Michael Hooper and Nicholas Sanchez are already well known around the rugby world, the next generation of Southern Hemisphere talent is going to continue to emerge during the Tri-Nations. Australia have high hopes for outside centre Jordan Pattaya, who was a teenager when he played for the Wallabies at the World Cup last year, and Argentina have unearthed yet another brilliant outside back in 22-year-old Santiago Carreras. New Zealand's 21-year-old left winger Caleb Clark is the most recent to emerge but might end up being the pick of the crop after earning comparisons with All Blacks great Jonah Lomu in his first two tests. This huge trophy has been contested by Australia and New Zealand since the 1930s and the series will be a competition within a competition in the Tri-Nations with the final two matches being played as the first two rounds of the tournament. Regaining the symbol of trans Tasman Sea rugby supremacy for the first time since 2003 would be a huge boost for the Australian game, and hopes have been raised by a fine performance in the 16 all draw with the All Blacks in Wellington three weeks ago. New Zealand rebounded with a 27 7 victory at their Eden Park Fortress the following week, however, and only need one draw against the Wallabies in the two remaining matches to take the trophy home for the 18th straight season. But I'm confident that, uh, especially after... Michael Checker resigned as Wallabies coach after a disappointing quarter-final exit at the World Cup last year, but will still play a part in the Tri-Nations after taking up an offer from his old mate Mario Ledesma to act as a consultant with Argentina. Checker's latter days with the Wallabies were not successful, but he has a reputation for galvanising a team. The Pumas can sure do with the help. While Australia and New Zealand's players have domestic Super Rugby competitions and two tests under their belts, only the European-based players in Ledesma's squad have played any rugby at all this year. Undercooked and having spent two weeks in quarantine before the tournament, Argentina will do well to muster anything close to a victory in their four tests. Everyone is hoping the Rugby Championship will be back to normal next year with the Springboks back in the fold, but who knows? Let's just enjoy what we can get while we can get it.